చెప్తాను ఏరా దీనికోసం పీపీటీ అంతా తయారు చేసి పెట్టాను మీరు అందులో రాకుండా ఇందులో వచ్చారు ఇందులో ఓన్లీ కనిపించడం తప్ప ఏం అవదా పీపీటీ రెడీ చేశారు సార్ అందులోని సార్ ల్యాప్టాప్ ప్రాబ్లం సార్ ఓకే సార్ నిన్న మనం ఎక్కడాగాం కదా మ్యూచువాలిజం అయింది మనకి అసోసియేషన్ ఇస్ ఇట్ క్లియర్ సో ద ఫస్ట్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ విచ్ వి ఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు సే ఈ సింబయోసిస్ it is between we call it as a mycorrhizal association mycorrhizal association in the sense generally in the forest ecosystem there will be a scarcity of minerals and waters for the uptake for the trees so because there is a lot of competition of uptake of minerals and water so there is a scarcity for the minerals and water among the trees so then what happens generally we all know that the fungi grows inside the soil means in the sense it it's grows in the just below the soil layer as a subterranean so what happens from some of the fungi are exclusively will have a association with the root system of higher plants so the association between the root system of higher plants with the fungi we generally call it as mycorrhizal association is it clear yes sir so this mycorrhizal association is a completely positive positive association where the tree get benefited of minerals as well as water from the fungi similarly yes. that fungi also get benefited of nutrition and a somewhat physiological association with the root system of higher plants to uptake the minerals means not minerals the nutrient substances so that is in both ways the fungi is also has got benefited by providing means it provides uh, a mineral to the tree and water to the tree and along in the same way normally what happens it also takes the nutrition from the tree so there is a both side give and take policy and both are get benefited of this generally we generally call it as symbiotic association and we also call this as a commensalism generally association we call it as a commensalism this is one good example between uh, mycorrhizal association with the higher plants so this happens only with the higher plants where they have a maximum tree habit so that is the thing so another very good example is we all know that fig tree fig tree is normally the tree which normally we call it as a, a banyan tree or otherwise a, a that is ficus religiosa so all these ficus. generally comes under fig tree categories they have a, a inflorescence called as hypanthodium which looks like in generally fruit like structure if you have anybody have your text you just open the text and you can see that particular diagram of inflorescence of fig fig fruit so it, so it has a fruit like appearance but inside that you will see the inflorescence that inflorescence we call it as a hypanthodium is it clear sir is this one or this one sir lift ah uh, this one the upper two one it is showing that is the inflorescence of female flower and this is of uh, next one showing the insect which is pollinating that particular wasp is the one which pollinates this so the wasps also present inside that particular fruit 
so that is association we call it as a commensalism the thing is that generally fig tree is get pollinated by a special vaps so this vaps generally enters into the inflorescence which we call it as hypanthodium and after entering it what happens it pollinates that inflorescence and it develops into fruit so pollination done by the wasps and due to that normally the plant has got benefited because pollination is done by this particular wasp it also got benefited and after that what happened this wasp doesn't leave that particular fruit and it it leaves x lays there x there and then itself so after laying x what happens these legs when they hatch they eat on the structures which are present inside the fruit so a fruit lo e unnayo avi aaharanga tinta mata so in this association the fig tree is getting benefited as well as the wasp is also wasp getting benefited. benefited so that's why we call this association is also as a mutualism where normally species a as well as species yeah. b get benefit over each other both are, both, are both, are both are positive in this particular so these are the very good example in respect to mutualism and we also have a certain kind of association called as a sexual desit this, this is very important for two marks question so if in case if you just look into the next page mutualism pakkan page tiragesthe there will yes. be a orchid flower where it is pollinated by a special insect yes sir clear yes, sir. so this is considered as a coevolution between the flowers as well as the insect and it is also generally considered as a pseudo copulator pseudo copulation or yes. other name for it is sexual desit are you able to listen yes sir amma illedra alain vishnu aa janaki unnaru asalu unnaru sir alakka ventnara ani amma good morning amma arogyam baagunda neeku vishnu ah okay nee nedipistunna janaki mee vodu ravi 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 kaadu adu arun gaadu arun so okay the thing is that sexual desit in the sense uh, if you just look at the flower that is there it is a mediterranean orchid flower ophis the name of that flower is ophis so this flower has got a special uh, pattern of arrangement of in flower means flower that it has got a one petal as a odd petal so that odd petal has a coloring pattern and uh, all the bristles which are present on that it gives an impression that that insect feels it as a female flower is it clear yes sir the insect which is going to be pollinated feels it as a female flower so by thinking of that is a female flower so this insect visits for the copulation process so when it copulates generally what happens abdomen of this insect will be filled with the existing pollen of that particular flower so similar way the same way it also feels when another flower of that particular plant look visible and it also think that a female flower and it visits that flower so in this world what happens already if pollen which is deposited over the insect's body will be taken by the next visited flower in the stigma so this way what happens like a piston so, mechanism so uh, it has a mechanism of uh a special because when the flower is evolved in a such a way that it is preferably only a, means one to one relationship that particular female it appears that male insect only can visit that so this is a one to one relationship that very few plants will have this kind of one to one relationship the previously also i have given an uh, example like pranobisella is an insect yeah. which normally only pollinates the yucca gloriosa so in this aspect the chances of pollinations are very less because yes. you need to evolve simultaneously a co evolution when suppose the insect is evolving in a different way simultaneously the plant also has to evolve in order to find out the same similarity so that's why even though still we see such kind of phenomenon of coevolution between the insect as well as pollen so that sexual desit is a good example for that coevolution of 
insect as well as the flower. So insect if it is evolved simultaneously we also see that there is evolution in the flowering pattern and development so that it can feel always that flower as a female flower. Sir, sir uh, generally animals having more evolution sir, than plants. The, see evolution pattern is different because that how extent it is evolved it depends upon the environment and the needs. The thing is that suppose if mistakenly a insect has evolved then the plant identity for existence becomes a question mark. Uh, yes, so it cannot get pollinated. If not pollinated it cannot produce. Reproduce. So its Surely. offsprings cannot be produced. It means the survival chances becomes question. So in, so it has two ways. Either way, it has to change its pollinating agent to some other category or otherwise it has to adapt with the insect. insect. So that's why if the insect is evolving, simultaneously you will see also there is evolution. So that is the example sexual deceit or pseudo copulatory process explains in this association. There is a co-evolution among the organisms association also. So this gives an idea regarding the co-evolution because even in the parasite and prey, parasite and host, there is also evolution. Predator and prey, there is also co-evolution. So it has some defensing mechanism against the predator, and these predators normally even break such kind of defensive mechanism and consumes the prey. So there is a parallel co-evolution for the existence. Otherwise, the prey cannot exist or the Predator cannot exist. Similarly, you will see even in the mutualism also there is a co-evolution exists. Sexual deceit is a two mark question. Please read it. Now coming to the parasitism mechanism, we all know that parasitism is a kind of association where the parasite get benefited of the host, but the host consequences are lethal or it is affected badly with a, a kind of disorder or disease means one faces host faces negative and the uh, parasite will enjoy it it get the positive, positive in this association but we have different kinds of association of parasite and host yes. and we have ectoparasitism we have endoparasitism we have brood parasitism there are three kinds of parasitisms are there and when you see the in the evolution we have seen parasites have a specific host. Host specificity is there since a long time. So even then the evolution is not taking in a such a way that the host will not become resistant to parasite. So we have seen malarial parasite since so many thousands of years. Oh. We are seeing the human is get affected and we are unable to get resist for that. In the evolution, what should we do? The organism must evolve, evolve in a such a way that it should not harm the host. Either host should have a resistance or otherwise parasite parasite should have a nullifying mechanism with the host. So, but it is not having that. It says that there is a co-evolution. When they means when the evolution is only at single side, we can accept that the human may develop a resistant against parasite. But simultaneously, along with the host, there is a evolution in the parasite also, which says that when a host is evolving, simultaneously parasite is all evolving to maintain that host and parasitic, parasitic balance. That is the means if the host develops resistance, the strain of the parasite changes so that it affects the host anyway. So, but whatever it is, there is a co-evolution in the parasitism also. We can say this association is not always the stable. It also evolves according to the needs and checks and balances. So, we have ectoparasitism where there is a clearly physical association between a parasite and a host for a temporary period of time. So, take example of bed lice, yani ki head loose, bed ticks. And a uh, hyrudina, which is a leech, we call them these three are examples of ectoparasitism. They have a temperative association to intake the food material. So, after that, generally they leave it. In case of leech, generally we see that it takes the sufficient amount of blood and after that it leaves the host. 
Okay. So once again, if it consumes all the matter, then again you will have association. So in such a way, we cannot consider the mosquito as a female mosquito as a female means parasite because we all know that female mosquitoes in general feeds only on fluid saps when there is a requirement or the, during the time of laying of eggs formation of eggs it requires a special protein which is available in the blood of vertebrate so that's why generally it feeds on vertebrate blood when it is ready to make eggs for the laying purpose that is the only other times generally it feeds on vegetative saps only name of the protein sir it's a blood protein there is no such it is a protein blood itself is a protein so it needs a protein component so that is present in our rbc so that's why they intake it so the thing is that and similarly this uh, ectoparasitism is not a complete physiological association it has a physical association for a temporary period of time and one more thing is th by this way not much damage is caused by the parasite to the host ectoparasites and coming to the endoparasitism it is in general the parasite which are indeed complex they have a physiological association and they depend on host for both shelter as well as okay. for the nutrition and in this physiological association we see very peculiar things means that the parasite develops evolve in a such a way that it it loses even some of the sense organs some of the organ systems like digestive system is not required because it it generally right. feeds on yeah. already already digested one so it need not have a reproductive system so means digestive system like that it has special adaptations like some adhesive suckers to bind to the intestinal walls and all these things they will be you can see in the case of tenio solium tapeworm ascaris lumbricoids hooks are present and these some appendages will be seen as a mode of adaptation to physiologically respond yeah. and one more thing we can see very complex means in such kind of parasites that they have a high reproductive ability and they multiply very fast in order to produce their eggs or otherwise their offsprings in the host so that is also they means some of the organ systems are so much reduced and they are even suspended from the parasite and some are exclusively highly developed so in this juncture what we can say that there is also evolution of parasites according to the physiological system of the host but most of the endos parasites are in general complex they have a specificity and identity in the life cycle pattern that's why they adapt to oh, infect the host in a physiological way and it is called as endoparasitism generally in this endoparasitism it badly affects the organs like kidney liver lungs as well as spleen and some other systems where normally it it lives in those system like immune system hiv virus yes. malaria it normally rbc as well as liver so such organs are there this in this organ it infects and it means it conducts its life cycle so that in general these organs get affected and we will have a, a bad consequences it becomes even a chronic condition and it is lethal to the even the organism the host may die also because of the consequences so this we call it as in general what we call it as endoparasitism there is a special interesting thing is called as a brood parasitism so brood parasitism this is also two mark question so this brood parasitism is a kind of the thing is it, it is in between uh, two organisms where so you will see there is association between cow crow crow and cuckoo the relation between cow and cuckoo we generally call it as a brood parasitism actually what happens uh, during the breeding season the cuckoo lays eggs in the cage of crows in the nest which is built by the crow the crow lays the eggs so in that the even cuckoo also lays the egg so the thing is that it lays the egg simply it doesn't take care the means uh, what we call as a the incubating of these gig so incubation and the rest of the practices for the hatching of egg is done by the crow only only crow so lay means actually 
those eggs are laid by the cuckoo and it is taken parental care by the crow so in this also if you observe the the coloring pattern and the pattern of egg shape size it similarly it resembles the crow's egg so that's why it cannot readily discriminate the dis the differences between the crow egg and the cuckoo egg so that it normally take cares after the hatching only it could notice that thing. by the time it normally it hatches so generally the things will over in this kind of association we generally call uh, as a brood parasitism this is also very very important in the aspect of parasitism we need to think one is ectoparasitism that is head loose and back bug along with leech are the good examples which have association sir, uh. sir why they are categorized as this parasitism so because uh, it is not doing actually the incubation and everything is not doing it is laying eggs in the nest of other thing clear so yes. even after hatching also initially doesn't have any discriminarity because all the uh, birds when they hatch they look similar because the coloring pattern also similar between the crow and cuckoo even it feeds the babies of those cuckoo also baby birds so that's why it invest its its yes. all the efforts so that's why we when we won't consider it as a complete parasitism but it is a special mode of relations between association between two species that's why we call it as a brood parasitism that is in respect to only nurturing taking parental care and all these things because unknowingly it it doesn't know whether we are just incubating the uh, eggs of other birds okay. so in that particular a scenario we have just named as a brood parasitism otherwise it doesn't have any bad consequences or diseases to that particular thing. it's only physical association between these two there won't be any physiological association so that we generally call it as a parasitism what arun sir sir after birth of cuckoo will it throw away the eggs of crow from no no it cannot detect because i just wanted to show even the eggs pattern i have a photograph but i could not see because a show because of this particular only it allows the video conference so actually when you just look into them you means we cannot sir, even distinguish sir, the sir, spots sir, which are there on the crow's egg similar spotting will be there on the even cuckoo's egg also so it it rejects after only the hatching after f- some days only when it it going to identify very clearly that it is not that by the time they get wings and they can lead an independent life that is the thing sir when we identify they kill on it no no it won't kill but so far we don't know what is the consequences after hatching but we only talk about the association between this like a brood parasitism we call it as we call it as a brood, brood parasitism. parasitism so sir we, sir we open the forum sir forum in the forum nothing we can show na forum sir, that blackboard collaborate sir ah no no it is not working they said sir as yes, system notice they had given sir what the uh, in yesterday we had seen sir oracle 7 they had given notice java script okay okay in like that it's not showing no no you need to install java 7 of uh, sun com- sun systems not oracle oh sorry you can also post on our facebook group account ha ah, that i those things i just upload photographs which is a sexual deceit and all these things anyway sexual deceit it is there in your book there is no need i have this kind of brood parasitism i have so that i will post uh, how normally the pattern of all these things egg patterns between the cuckoo and uh, crow that you can see and uh, tomorrow what is your program because you have been allocated to read telugu no, or otherwise tomorrow yeah, morning you are free chemistry exam yes. chemistry exam tomorrow day after tomorrow uh-huh. so the tomorrow whole day will be taken by the chemistry teacher okay. or otherwise they allow you, you to come over here because you know. one we have left yeah. it is it is competition yeah. competition only the one which is left in the population association so 
whether if it is feasible tomorrow by this time i can come okay. or otherwise you read yourself regarding competition competition is negative negative that is mnsalism and competition is negative negative uh, mnsalism is zero zero minus and competition sir, is minus minus huh how much time it takes that class sir it takes only half an hour Afternoon. because it to shows i mean the x even like this conference also if evening if you make arrange that's sufficient then we will ask so you just whatever it is there you just make a phone call and confirm before this okay, okay, because if may if i may if may if i i may go out means i cannot attend that's the thing. okay so okay so, thanks to nirvan sir ko bol dijiye mere taraf se okay. and okay then have a good day <laughs> thank you for coming sir sir welcome sir thank you sir sir once sir rev rev nine chip असोसीयेषन विस्ट फर् देक आफ फूड అది వచ్చి అది తీసుకొని దాని తర్వాత అవి వాట్ పని గిలుపుతాయి నల్లి ఇక్కడ నల్లి అంటే ఇది హెడ్ లూజ్ అనేది తలలోనే ఉంటది కానీ ఇట్ ఇస్ నాట్ ఏ ఇంటర్నల్ అసోసియేషన్ అది బయటే ఉంటది లోపలే తిరుగుతది కావాల్సినప్పుడు బ్లడ్ తీసుకుంటది అంతే సో ఎక్టో పారాసైటిజం ఇస్ కంప్లీట్ అండ్ వి హావ్ వన్ మోర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ వెరీ గుడ్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ దట్ ఇస్ కస్కూటా 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 హైలీనా అండ్ కస్కూటా రిఫ్లెక్సా ఇస్ ఏ పర్మనెంట్ స్టెమ్ పారాసైట్ so it has association with so many head uh, adathoda vesica there is a name of the plant called as adathoda vesica it has a permanent association with the plant so due to the evolution it has lost its chloroplast it doesn't have leaves the cascuta doesn't have leaves it doesn't have chloroplast it has only flower which is belongs to family convolvulaceae so it belongs. but means the thing is that it is a permanent stem parasite wherever it goes on the plant it sends hostoria into the plants xylem and phloem so that it can absorb water as well as nutrients from them and it can lead a parasitic life so that is a another good example in case of plants cascuta which is a permanent stem parasite it looks in yellow color no sir yeah yellow color so it's normally if you just uh, there you type Uh, in the google you can see the f- diagram of oh, that also so that is it's nothing but it's like a a climber it climbs doesn't have any kind of leaves but it it lose also its it has lost its chlorophyll also because of parasitic habit okay sir general ga mammoth check meda untay ga sir उंट सर जी हां ओके आओ सेना बोलिए